So you just got a new PS5. Here's every accessory that you should pick up. We're just gonna dive right into this list, starting with a new SSD. Look, you get the PS5, you see that it has 680 gigabytes of usable storage. You're like, that's a lot of storage. Especially compared to the 500 gigabytes my PS4 had, it again, seems like a lot of storage. It's a whole 180 extra gigabytes. I'm telling you right now, it is not enough storage. If you didn't hear about a year ago, Sony defeated one of its biggest controversies was that you couldn't expand the storage even though there was an extra SSD port. Uh, and now you can expand it with my favorite SSD, the Samsung 980 Pro. Now, the reason I always recommend this drive is because it's the one I use in my console. Samsung actually sponsored a video last Christmas for the channel and they sent over this drive and I popped it in my PS5 and I have had zero problem since. It's a great drive and now it's so much cheaper than it was last year because last year, I think it was around $300 and now it's all the way down to $200, which yes, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've seen it go as low as $170 if you're a teacher or a first responder or something like that, but that deal is long gone. So I would definitely pick this drive up for 200 because 200 bucks for two terabytes at this speed is kind of an unheard of deal. And the only reason it's going that low is because the 990 Pro is allegedly going to come out in January or February, and that will push the prices back up to around 260, 270. So do yourself a favor now, save 60 or 70 bucks on my highest recommended drive, the Samsung 980 Pro. Another drive I recommend, even though it's a little bit more money, is the WD Black SN850. So you can get the PS5 branded one that's literally just a different box, and you will pay $10 more for that box. It'll be $260. But if you just get the non-branded one, it's $250. This drive, like speed-wise, you're not gonna notice a difference between the Samsung 980 Pro. But again, where you are going to notice the difference is in uh, 50 or $60, depending depending on which drive you get. There are a ton of other options out there though, and a lot of them go down cheaper to like 160, 170. I still recommend at 200 that Samsung 980, just because with the heatsink and with the performance I've gotten out of it, it's impossible not to recommend. So when I was looking through all the PlayStation accessories on Amazon, I found this dock attachment thingy. You can get one for the front of your PS5, and what it does is it extends the USB port on the front of your machine. Now it's not the best because it extends them into USB 2.0 ports, but that's enough to like charge your phone or charge a couple extra controllers or something like that. And if you don't have a laptop or a power strip or one of these charging bricks that a lot of people have, this could turn your PS5 into the ultimate charging companion. It's like 17 bucks, but what I really think would improve it is uh, putting an SSD inside of it. There's a dock that I have for the Steam Deck that JSOC sent over that's basically like a Steam Deck dock that looks like a Switch dock. You drop the Steam Deck onto it, and in the back of it, there's a full-sized SSD that expands the storage of your uh, Steam Deck. And I think this could be really cool if they made something like that that connects to the USB-C port and expands the PS5 to allow PS4 games to be stored there. Another thing that I think you should definitely take a look at is a pair of new plates for your PS5 alongside a matching DualSense. So they have a bunch of colors at this point. They have Cosmic Red, Midnight Black, they have a purple, a blue, and then there's a sort of weird special edition gray camo one that honestly, when it was announced, I didn't love it, but now it's really grown on me and I kind of wish I picked one up. So I might be following my own deals video here soon, but you can get these things from the PlayStation Direct store and they're basically all around $50. There's like $5 of variance between the different colors. And the coolest thing about it is Sony does a good job making sure that every single version of these plates has a matching dual sense to go with it. But if you're a gamer who wants to make sure your PS5 accessories look the same across across the board, you could just pick up a Pulse Wireless 3D headset, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But if you like the black or the gray camo, Sony actually offers both plates, a DualSense, and the Pulse Wireless 3D headset in that colorway. So you could have matching accessories across the board. I personally have a set of the dark plates that dbrand made before they got sued by Sony on my PlayStation 5. I don't have the official ones with the PS cutout there, but a black PS5 looks extremely good, and my matching black DualSense is perfect. Perfect. I have it just resting on the front of my PS5, and I actually use that black dual sense for my PC, and then I use my God of War Ragnarok one for my actual PS5. But regardless, I would highly recommend picking up an extra dual sense at the very least. Unfortunately, my favorite dual sense, which is the God of War Ragnarok edition of the controller, that sold out, and it actually looks like it's a limited controller. That's really shocking to me because I bought a ton of special edition DualShock 
stores back in the day. I had the PS1 edition when they did the 20th anniversary. That was so cool. I also had the Pebble Blue Uncharted 4 edition, and those I would see on store shelves for months after they became available. So unfortunately, if you missed that one, it looks like you're SOL. So with that being said, as far as special editions go, the only one that's really gonna look unique that you can actually get your hands on at this point is the gray camo, which on the surface, again, I didn't actually love, but if you look a little closer, all of the camo blobs actually are made up by like PlayStation face buttons. So you've got the square circle cross triangle hidden in there. It looks super cool if you look super close. But if you just got your PS5, you've got a white dual sense, you're totally happy with that, but you're like, huh, I just came over from Xbox and what I really liked over there is the Xbox Elite Series 2. Well, I've got you covered with the dual sense edge. This thing comes out January 26th and it's basically the dual sense version of the Elite Series 2. And hopefully, I have my fingers crossed here, it is a lot more durable than the Elite Series 2. I think the marquee feature of this thing outside of the case, the swappable stick heights, the paddles, all that stuff that you know and love from the Elite Series 2 is the fact that it comes along with the adaptive triggers, which you can also lock, and it has the haptic feedback of the DualSense, which I think makes it a lot better than the Elite Series 2. And then finally, you can actually switch out the little controller modules. So like if your joystick gets joystick drift or anything like that, you can just go to the PlayStation Store, order a new set of joysticks, and you'll be good to go in no time. That's a genuinely sweet feature because unfortunately, stick drift is completely unavoidable in 2022. Regardless of what controller you get, one thing I highly recommend picking up is the controller dock that Sony makes. It matches the PS5, which is kind of cool. Like if you turn it vertically, I think, it actually looks just like the PlayStation 5. And what it allows you to do is charge your controllers when you're not using them. And the reason I highly recommend it is because the DualSense does not have the best battery life. That is one feature that definitely came over from the DualShock 4. But in this case, the battery life's even worse. And a lot of people think it's mainly because of the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback that's drawing a lot of battery. So yeah, you should definitely pick up one of these charging docks. They're 30 bucks. Another thing I would recommend is the PlayStation 5 media remote. This thing goes on sale for 20 bucks all the time, but I bought it for 30 and I think it's totally worth it for that. So you pair it with your TV, which is cool. It can turn your TV on and off and control the volume and everything like that. But it also controls the media apps on your PlayStation 5, which is great because it's going to save the battery in your dual sense. So you can log into your PlayStation 5 just like you would with your DualSense, but once you do that, it has buttons for all the streaming services you probably use, like YouTube, Netflix, and Disney Plus, and the batteries in it, I think they're AA, they've lasted me uh, two years at this point. So I highly recommend picking one of these things up if your PS5 is going to run the media streaming apps on your TV, which it has all the biggest ones, it doesn't have the best ones. PS5 really needs to get shuttered, that's all I'm saying. Another accessory you're probably gonna wait a couple months on is the PSVR 2, mainly because of the price. So this thing at launch to get the main bundle that has the controllers, the headset, everything you need is going to be $550. And if you wanna get it in a bundle with of course, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is the biggest game Sony's making for it at launch, that's gonna cost you right around 600 bucks. As far as the hardware goes, this is one of the best VR headsets on the market. It's got OLED screens, it's got high resolution screens, it's got inside out tracking, it's got two new controllers that are called the Sense controllers. They're basically, if you took the DualSense, split it in half, and combined it with the Valve Knuckles or the Oculus Touch controllers, it looks like this thing is pretty cool, and every preview we've heard about from the PSVR 2 makes it seem like a massive, like leaps and bounds upgrade over the PSVR 1 and even the Oculus Quest 2. Sony is going all in on VR this generation. They've been designing this thing since the PS5 came out. It's built to work inside the PS5's OS. It's not meant to feel like a separate add-on that just plugs in and kind of takes over the PlayStation 5. So I think this is going to be something that is worth picking up at some point in 2022, if not on February 22nd when it comes out. Now this next accessory is a little expensive, but it's actually extremely cool. I've looked at it here on the channel before, but what it is, is it's a new side panel for your PlayStation 5 that comes with a 4K screen that flips up. So what it effectively does is turn your PS5 into a laptop type situation. 
situation, which is so cool because when I was a kid, the PS1 had an official attachment like this that went over the disk drive and it made the PS1 portable. It was so awesome. And now we have that with the PS5 and I'm just gonna be real. It does not look anywhere near as elegant and it's very expensive at $370. It's from a brand called G-Story who makes screens for stuff like the Xbox Series S and X as well. And honestly, I had no issues with this thing. The screen is 60 Hertz, it's 4K. It looks really good. It's got a nice bright panel in there. And if you're someone who likes to travel a lot, like you spend a lot of time in hotels or in the backseat of cars, this could be a cool thing to bring along with you. Or if you just want a PS5 that you can play on your desk where you set it horizontally, throw this monitor on and you're just ready to go, this could be the perfect thing for you. Now for me, I've got a pretty nice TV at home. I've got an OLED LG TV, which I really like. I'll link that down in the description as well. But for a lot of people out there, this seems like a cool option. So I figured I'd talk about it. The main monitor I use for my PC and my PS5 when I want to record footage though, is the InZone M9. Now this thing is really expensive. It's around a thousand bucks, but what you're getting for that is a 4K 120 Hertz monitor that looks like the PS5 and is built to work with the PS5. It's got local dimming. It's got HDR. It looks absolutely phenomenal. The one big issue I have with it is that it takes forever to switch inputs, but even that has a little remedy where you can use the InZone software on your PC to make it so it just stays on that one input and it doesn't search through all of them every time you turn the monitor on or off. I think the biggest draw though with it is again that it matches the PlayStation 5 and just the panel quality in this thing is absolutely phenomenal. So even though it's a little expensive, I have no hesitation in recommending this monitor. But if you want a cheaper option, there's the InZone M3, which is 530. The only issue is that monitor is 1080p, so it's not gonna look that great if you're playing PS5 games. I would just go full out and get the M9 if you're picking up any monitor for the PlayStation 5. As far as headsets go, I've got three recommendations for you. We've got the Pulse Wireless 3D headset, which is the classic Sony headset. This thing has been uh, the classic headset going all the way back to the PlayStation 3, and they've done hardware revisions on it every single generation of that console sense. And I think with this generation, they really nailed it. It fits really good over your ears. It's super comfortable. The sound isn't incredible. I'd give it like an eight out of 10, but what really helps it is going into the actual sound settings on your PS5 and you can tune the EQ. There's an article online if you Google Tune EQ of Pulse Wireless 3D headset that shows you exactly how to do it. And the reason you want to do that is because this thing can take advantage of 3D audio. Uh, so you can play games like the Callisto Protocol and hear the zombies jumping out behind you. It's absolutely terrifying. You can hear the enemies all around you in Ghost of Tsushima. And if you really want to hear the difference, go to audio and click on 3D audio. And there's a demo there that shows you what it feels like to use 3D audio in games. And then you'll definitely hear the difference when it switches over to stereo. So that one's a hundred bucks, but it goes on sale for 70 all the time. And whatever the price is, I think it's totally worth it. It comes along with a dongle too. So you're not going to get any latency. And if you're a PC gamer, you can also use that dongle on PC and it'll work just fine. That one, again, like I mentioned earlier, comes in white, midnight black and gray camo. Honestly, for me, I think the gray camo looks really good because the headband is black, but the cans are camo. I think that's a cool two tone look, but again, it's up to you. I would just go with black or camo just because the white, I don't know. I feel like if you throw it in your backpack or something like that, it's going to get a little dirty. The next headset I have to recommend is the headset I have been using for months now and absolutely love. It's the InZone H7. Now this one was hard to recommend when it came out because it was $230, but now it's dropped all the way down to 150, which is only 50 bucks more than the Pulse Wireless 3D, but you really are getting around $130 worth of sound out of this headset. It's incredible. Just to be clear, I meant 130 difference between the Pulse Wireless and the regular price of this headset. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the EQ tuning that the Pulse Wireless does, but you don't really need it in my opinion. It sounds great out of the box because it uses the drivers from Sony's best Bluetooth headphones, which are like the WH-1000X Mark Vs or something like that at this point. Uh, I think they sound incredibly good, but the best feature that I have with this headset is that you can also connect your phone to it at the same time that you're using the dongle and you can mix a podcast in or a video when you're trying to get the Platinum Trophy and the Callisto Protocol and cheat 
cheat by loading a save at the end of the game and just running down a hallway. Or you can load in Discord on your phone and have the chat come through the headset. And you have this really cool feature where if you flip the mic up, it's muted. And if you flip it down, the microphone comes on. You can also mix in the world around you. It doesn't have noise canceling, but the headphones get loud enough where I don't think you really need it. But if you really want noise canceling, you can get the H9, but I don't think it's worth the extra money. And the biggest reason for that also is that the H9 is $280, which I do not think they are worth that. And then the third option is for people like me who like Razer. I used the Black Shark V2 Pros for a really long time. They come along with a dongle as well. They have a detachable mic. They've got pretty good drivers inside the headset and they just look kind of cool. Unfortunately, mine lasted a few years, but then the receiver kind of took a hit from a drink. I was uh, drinking at my desk and the receiver's range sort of decreased over time from around like 80 feet because I would walk around my apartment and still be able to hear all the way down to like six inches to the point where I had to get an extender for it and keep it like right next to the headset. So I don't recommend spilling a drink on the receiver if you do pick up this headset. But right now it's on sale for a hundred bucks and I really have no problem recommending it if you like the look of it. Whether you're upgrading from a PS4 or you're just getting into the PS ecosystem for the first time, you're going to need PlayStation Plus. And I'm just going to come out and say it, you should buy PS Plus Extra. This is the middle tier. You've got Essential, which is the cheapest. You've got Extra, which is the middle. And then you've got Premium, which is the premium. I didn't think out this sentence well in my head. Premium, flat out not worth it. All you get along with Premium is game streaming, which doesn't work very well. It's blocky. There's a lag. It just doesn't look good either, even when you're playing PS2 games. And then you also get classic games, but Sony hasn't really released any of those since they put out PS Plus Premium in the first place. Uh, PS Plus Essential is just PS Plus as it's been, so you get a library of monthly games. If you add them to your account, they're in your account while you pay, but if you stop paying, they get taken away, and Extra gives you that plus a library of games, which Sony has done an incredible job, unlike with PS Plus Premium's classic games, of adding PS4 and PS5 games in huge batches every month, and they're always good games. Even some first party stuff is in there, like Returnal, Demon Souls, and Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut. And I would expect by the middle of next year, The Last of Us Part One will make its way in there as well. So regardless, if you get a PS5, you need PlayStation Plus, and my recommendation goes for PS Plus Extra.